I was wrong in doing what I did. No, 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 no. Are you listening? No, I'm 87. Sean here. You know, most of us can look back at our childhood. I can think of the days during the summer, the junior high years, middle school to you guys, some of you, where I would get up in the morning, first thing, grab my skateboard or freestyle bike, and I didn't get home until late at night. I had been going all the way across a very large city into downtown areas. I just loved being outdoors, learning new tricks, meeting new people. It was fun. Skateboarding is not our crime anyway. I still have time to play video games, go to parties. I wouldn't go to those kind of parties until I was in high school and then I was addicted, but costume parties, birthday parties, you know, when you still had that stuff. Playing outside, playing in the woods, building a treehouse, summer camp. I have all of these memories. So many things happened in summer camp. We were playing Capture the Flag. I'll tell you this real quick. And it was a farm, and it was a day camp, and I was in LIT, leadership and training, comes before CIT, counseling and training. And I slipped and slid and it was a giant cow patty, and I was covered from my foot to my shoulder and cow poop. That's just one of probably hundreds of memories I can recall, and then having to wait to get cleaned off. Now think about Lauren. Think about yourself, how many you can tell, and then think about Lauren. Think about the lack of core memories he has. That is a symptom of a much larger issue, a deep-seated issue self-centeredness, narcissism. He probably spent those years manipulating, lying, which is why all of his memories are about feelings. And we talked about, you know, how emotions can trigger our memories, and in some cases they're bad, you feel like that, that era is never gonna end, and you just want the pain to go away, and you just count down until it does. Well, it's been 50-something years, and Lauren is still holding on to it. Because that narcissism and self-centeredness, it's, it's holding him as a hostage, a prisoner. He's probably still angry that some of those manipulations and lies didn't get him the attention he wanted or he felt he deserved. And he can't get past it. And the whole bottle situation, after you have time to reflect, you really start to get a feel for who this guy is and just how sick and dangerous he is. He's not funny, except when we're laughing as a group, right? When you're watching a bad movie, it's so bad, it's funny, and you can't you can't breathe, you're laughing so hard. Lauren is like that. But if you notice, when you listen one-on-one, -on -one, you get a completely different set of feelings. It's not funny, it's not funny. But it's not as funny anymore. It's rage and pussy. Now, do I feel sorry for Lauren? Yes, but I'll qualify that. I feel sorry that he is a prisoner of his own... I don't want to say stupidity. Because that's me, so... Moronic squat job ignorance! And we know he's not really ignorant. He knows the difference between right and wrong. But he chooses to ignore it, especially when it affects the attention he's going to get, what he's going to get. Is he going to get some kind of control? Is he going to get some kind of emotional reward? And I think for the most part, yes. Yes, he is. Because Lauren only needs about 10% of what he wants to just move on. If he can just get somebody... See, yeah, that's all I wanted! You know, one in a million. I, I can't say, Lauren, 20 years down the line... You know, if I get hit by a car and I have some kind of brain damage, if I wouldn't want to talk to you again, that's, a, that's all I wanted. That's all I needed. Jeez, what an asshole. I'm not even going to get into that. But I think a lot of it, his memories in the very beginning, they're just about what he wanted, what he didn't get. I was listening to a Dark Side Bill like, podcast where people just make fun of him and point out his insanity. He has held on to the fact that there was a Wolverine action figure he wanted and he told his parents you know you better get it now before they're out and then it was out and he ended up not getting it 
for his birthday and he straight up said he's never forgiven them for that. Holy crap. Imagine that. You're a kid. You don't get an action figure and you hold on to that anger. Borderline disdain because you didn't get a toy that you wanted. Dude. I mean, the way he remembers things like his dad leaving and growing up without a father. Are you kidding me? There was a father. I know it's not the same. I do. I know it's not the same. And that dad will always, for some people, dad will always be dad. Until, unless it's a really bad situation. But I'm sure Lauren remembers that as a personal slight against him. He never tells a story about how it affects his, his brothers and sisters. He never tells a story about how his dad leaving, at least to my knowledge, how his dad leaving affected them and what it did to them emotionally. It's all about little Lorne. He doesn't remember the collateral damage. He doesn't remember other people involved and how something affected them. You know, say he's on a roller coaster and it crashes. He'd remember how it affected him. He wouldn't remember the people that died or the people that were severely injured while he got a bruised arm. And that's just who he is. And that's why he has no real core memories because it's all based on selfishness, personal need, you know, that's all one. So I don't think we'll ever hear anything substantial about his childhood other than making mud pies or singing on the porch with Grandma because that was all about him. And he probably came up with the idea and thinks he's a genius. Why don't we make mud pies? Play butcher shop? It's just very sad that he doesn't have what normal people have. Anyway, short video. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Yeah,